And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a nice, punchy, snappy snare. Now, if you watched my kick drum tutorial, you're going to notice that I'm going to be using a lot of the same effects to process the sound. So let's go ahead and get started by creating an empty MIDI track by pressing Command Shift T. Then go ahead and add a drum rack. Go to your samples folder. And try to find a good snare sample. So I'm going to go ahead and preview a bunch until I find one that I like. Okay, so I think that one sounds good, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it to an empty drum rack slot. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a one bar MIDI clip by highlighting one bar and pressing Command Shift M. Now click on this MIDI clip, paint in a couple notes. I like to drag the velocity all the way up. Now bring your loop markers to the edges of this clip. Turn your loop switch on. And now I can loop this over and over again while I process it. So the first effect I always add is an EQ. And I'm just going to be using this as a high pass to get rid of any of the lows that we don't need. So let me go ahead and play this back. Now you want to make sure you keep this initial thump in, since that's the attack of the snare. So that sounds good right there, so I'm going to go ahead and add a saturation plugin. You can use any saturator you want. I'm going to go ahead and use the Ableton Stock Saturator. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up the drive until I think it sounds pretty good. You don't want to overdo the drive because it will start to sound distorted and kind of harsh. So let me play this back. Let me bypass it. Okay, so I think that sounds pretty good right there. Maybe bring down the drive a little bit. Now as you can see, the output is clipping, which you do not want. So go ahead and go to the output knob and turn it down until you see no clipping. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add Ableton's compressor. I'm going to go ahead and do a 4 to 1 ratio. Sometimes I do it a six sometimes I do a six to one on my snares. An attack time of around several milliseconds. So the attack gets through. I'll easily leave my release settings at the default. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the threshold as much as possible. Um not too much to where it takes a lot of the power away, but I'll just play with it and see what sounds the best. Okay, so that sounds pretty good right there. As you can see, I'm clipping again, so make sure to turn down this output just below clipping. Okay, so. Now I'm going to add another instance of Ableton's EQ8. And I'm going to use this EQ specifically just for shaping the sound.
Now, if you see this initial thump at 200 hertz, you want to emphasize that. So mess with the gain, the resonance. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to a band up in the higher frequencies and emphasize the higher frequencies. Mess with the gain. Resonance. Okay, so now I'm going to go to band number three and attenuate some of the mids with a narrow resonance and kind of scan the frequency spectrum. And usually I find that doing this will make the sound more punchy and snappy. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But And plus it gets rid of any unwanted frequency content which you don't really need so let's go ahead and play this back bypass it Okay, so it sounds pretty good the way it is. I might actually come back to that after I add my next effect. So the next effect is going to be a limiter. It's actually going to be the last effect. So use any limiter you want. If you want, you can use Ableton's stock limiter. Or if you like another third-party limiter, go ahead and throw it in. I personally like Data Life Sausage Fattener. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in here. And this is essentially a limiter. The fatness knob is like bringing down the threshold on a limiter or maximizer. And the color knob is basically an all pass filter that goes from your lows to your highs. So let's go ahead and play this back. And as you can see, it's clipping. So you want to turn down the gain in the EQ8 previous to the sausage fattener. Okay, so that looks good right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and drive up the fatness as much as possible until it starts to sound like shit. Okay, so as you can tell, it's starting to sound distorted. It's kind of starting to break up a little bit. So let's bring it down, let's bring it down to a good point. Okay, so that sounds pretty good right there. Now, since maximizing or limiting something changes the character so much, you might have to go to the EQ before it and mess with some of the settings and shape it a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I think this sounds pretty good right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight all my effects and group them by pressing Command G. And now I'm going to show you the non-processed version towards the processed version. So here's not processed. And here's processed. So not processed 
and processed. So quite a bit of a difference. This is my typical effect chain I'll use, I'll use on my snares. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. If it did, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Um, also, if you could follow me on SoundCloud, Facebook, that would be awesome. The links are in the video description below. And feel free to leave feedback, comments. If you want me to make another tutorial, just let me know. I'll most likely be more than happy to. And also, check out some of my other tutorials. So, I'm going to leave you guys with a preview of a track I recently finished called Serotonin. And I hope you guys enjoy it and take it easy.